two households, both alike in dignity, in Fair Verona, where we lay our scene. Hey friends, it's Jesse, and welcome back to the channel, and today we are going to be doing a three looks and honest review of the new Nomad Cosmetics Verona palette. This is the, I believe, Love and Death palette. I am so excited about this. If you guys didn't know, I am a huge fan of reading, and growing up, I really enjoyed Shakespeare, especially. I was that weird kid that loved to insult people in Shakespearean. I'm very excited to play with this palette today. We are getting all the Romeo and Juliet vibes, the Love and death vibes, light and dark, all the things. So if you're interested in seeing all the looks I created with this palette and my honest thoughts, then you're in the right place. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, friends, it is time to do our first look using the new Nomad Verona palette. If we open it up, we have this beautiful vampy side as well as a very bright pinky red side. And if it weren't obvious by my sweater choice, I think we are going to go for the bright pink side today. I'm gonna start with a fluffy tapered blending brush and we're gonna go into Paradise, which is this very pretty pastel baby pink. I am just going to pop Paradise all over my crease. We're just gonna do a nice blown out crease moment. This palette is definitely inspiring me to do the absolute most smoked out smoky eyes ever. I just feel like it's giving the best smoky vibes. I'm taking this pretty high. It is a pretty light shade, so I'm buffing that almost all the way up towards my eyebrow. Next, I'm going to take just this big shadow brush. This is a ColourPop E13, and I'm going to go into this matte Barbie pink right here. This is the shade Balcony, and I feel like that'll make the perfect crease shade. With Nomad shadows especially, I find the best way to blend them is to pack them down first and then go back and blend the shades together. Very pretty. This shade almost matches my sweater. I'm kind of obsessed with it. Who would have thought? I like a pink palette. I smoked it out a little too much on the side, so I'm just going to take a clean blending brush and I'm going to just kind of smoke that smoke. I do want to do a pretty good sized wing, so I like it to be smoky up until the wing and then smoke it separately on the lower lash line. Next, I'm going to take Rose, which is this slightly deeper pink matte. This one is just a touch deeper from the last pink we used. I'm just going to plop this right on the outer corner for now. I'm sure I'm going to go back and add a little bit more, but I'm just going to really concentrate that on the outer corner for the time being. I really want to go into some of these shimmers. I think I'm going to start with Romeo, which is this pink shimmer. This one up top, this is Cupid. This is like a pinky purple shift. So I think I'm going to start with Romeo, just this true pink. I did a look with the vampier side the other day, and I found that the texture of the shimmers was a little bit chunkier. I did use a brush, but today I want to try and use my finger and see how that affects the overall look. My nails are a bit long, so we will see how this goes. Okay, that's pretty. That reminds me of one of the shimmers in the Tokyo palette that Nomad did. It is very pigmented on the finger and I'm just kind of popping that right on the lid. This shade I'm keeping it towards the middle and outer portions of my lid and then I'm gonna try and go in with Cupid in the inner portion. I just messed that up so we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Oh shoot, we're a little too pigmented. On this side, I used my finger, but on this side, I'm gonna try and use the brush. I did pat a little bit with my finger, but I caught myself. I wanna try it with the brush quick. Definitely think I prefer the finger with these particular shimmers. I feel like it's gonna give you the most color payoff. Does anyone else just casually use their pants to clean their brushes off? Because these particular pajama pants are stained with so many colors of eyeshadow, it's crazy. Next, I wanna go into this top purpley shimmer, Cupid. And this one is gonna go on the inner part of my lid. Because my nails are a little too long, I am gonna actually go in with a brush for this particular shade. I don't think I'd be able to get this shade right in that inner part just with my fingers because my nails are too long. Now that I have the shimmers down, I'm gonna just quick pop into Rose again, which is this slightly deeper pink matte. And I'm just gonna pop that right in the inner corner again, just to make sure that shade is noticeable amongst the other shades. And I think I do wanna go into one of the deeper mattes on the deeper side, just for the very outer corner. I do think I'm gonna take the tiniest bit of dark, which is this deep kind of burgundy matte, and I'm gonna just pop the smallest, tiniest bit right in the outer corner. 
Before I hop into liner and lashes, I'm gonna do the lower lash line and I'm gonna hop into Paradise and Balcony. And we're just gonna smudge those on the lower lash line, just kind of messily. Honestly, I don't really give too much attention to the lower lash line because I feel like it all just smokes out anyway. And because my eyes are pretty small, I don't really feel like you can see a lot of detail as is. So I just kind of messily blend some of the shades together to create a nice smoky lower lash. Here is the look so far. I'm gonna quick hop off camera. We're gonna do some liner lashes and then just finish up the look and we'll come back together to share the completed masterpiece. Here is the completed first look. I actually really love how this turned out. I love the pink. The pink vibes just give me life. I also tried a slightly different type of lip. I did like a nude with a little bit of pink just in the middle, just to kind of spice it up, switch it up. It's always good to try new things, but overall, I really like how this look turned out. I'm very excited to see how the other looks with this palette turn out. So let's go ahead and jump into the second look. Let's go ahead and dive into the next look. I just wanna give a preface. I'm kind of going through some hormonal outbreaks. So I did my best to spot conceal and color correct, but we're just going for kind of like a lazy day, hence the bun and the random spot. So I did a quick base, but we're gonna go ahead and jump into the palette. For today's look, I'm almost thinking I wanna do something a little bit with the grungy side. I'm gonna go ahead and close this side. I think I wanna do something with like these mauve colors. I feel like that'll kind of match the vibe that I'm going for today. The first shade I'm gonna tap into is this mauve shade. It is the shade Dagger. I'm just taking Dagger on a fluffy brush and I'm starting in my crease and kind of buffing that up towards my eyebrow. We're going for a smoky moment. My personal preference for working with the Nomad shadows especially is I'll go and I'll pat them down first and then I'll take the same brush and just kind of buff it out. They are super pigmented and I feel like just packing them into place before blending gives you that extra little bit of punch. This palette is so awkward to hold. Next, I'm going into this darker kind of mulberry maroon shade. This is the shade Dark and I'm gonna go ahead and take that in my crease as well. And I am packing that in the outer corner and then I'm doing that same pack and then blend technique. So packing it in the outer corner and then gently blending in circular motions up into the mauve taupe shade. Hello, hi. You wanna say hi to our internet friends? I promise he loves you all. This shade is very pigmented, but it is blending out very nice. Hello, my good sirs. I'm just gonna take a quick clean brush and just kind of buff over the edges of everything. Sorry about Bruce running around. He's very excited this morning. And very quickly, I'm just gonna go back into the shade Dagger and make sure everything is blended together. Literally, my blending style is just keep going in with like all the shades until I like how it looks. <laughs> I do wanna go into some of these deeper shades, but for now, I'm gonna hop into some shimmers and I wanna do kind of a cut crease moment. I'm gonna go into my NYX glitter glue, but first I have to clean off my brush in my really dirty color switch. I have to wash my brushes and I just haven't gotten to it yet. So for my cut crease, I wanna start in the inner part and I think I'm gonna do like a half cut crease because I wanna do my brighter shimmer on the very inner part and then the darker shimmer can blend in with the rest of the look so i'm not too concerned about that one now that i have the glitter glue laid down i'm gonna go into this yellow gold shade it's kind of like a yellow shifting gray almost it's very interesting i'm gonna go ahead and pop that yellow shade right on the inner part of my lid where i placed the glitter glue interesting so this is how we're looking so far. I think I am gonna hop back into dark on just a tapered blending brush and I'm going to go ahead and define that crease just a tiny bit. I feel like I just lost that deeper shade on that inner part after I did my half cut crease. Up next, I'm gonna go into Tragedy, which is this purple shifting green gold shade at the bottom. And I'm gonna pop that in the middle of my lid. For this one, I am gonna spritz it with a little bit of the Morphe setting spray because I felt like the gold shade was a little bit dry. And not even dry in a bad way, just dry in a different texture way. I prefer more of wet shimmers. Okay, that, that helped a lot. So I'm just packing this right on the center of my lid, kind of brushing it from the center to the outer part of my lid. 
and gently tapping it over the gold to blend those two. I really like the texture of these shimmers. They're more of like a chunky texture and I think it's very pretty. It gives you that nice textured metallic look. Next, I'm gonna pop into the black matte shade Death and I'm going to take that on a very small tapered blending brush and pop that in the outer corner of my look just to deepen everything up. I'm just gonna show this as the reality of working with dark shadows. Sometimes we mess up and it looks like this and that's completely fine. I'm a little panicked because I'm trying to figure out how to save this look. <laughs> the vibe for this look is definitely dark and messy and grungy. So I'm gonna go into a black eyeliner. This is the Urban Decay and Eternals Cosmic Speed Liner. It's kind of like black with some glitter. And I'm just going to really messily kind of just smudge that on my lash line before I do some lashes. I'm going to quick do my lower lash line. I'm just going to do a really messy smoke of all three of these matte shades we used. The mauve, the maroon, and the black. Okay, friends, here is the almost completed eye look. We're definitely going for that very grungy, like, 2015 early 2010s like pop punk makeup. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the look off camera and then I will meet you guys back here once I have lashes, lips, and all that good stuff to see how the final look pulled together. All right, friends, this is the final look for the grungy emo look. I think I pulled it together, honestly. Like, I feel like I was able to make this work and turned it into my 15 year old emo girl self's everyday makeup look. As always, all products that I used on my face will be linked in the description box below. I personally am living for this lip combo. I think the combination of the lip shape and color really helped tie the rest of the look together and make the eye look look a little bit more intentional. It was definitely not the product's fault. It was more user error and just my personal lack of direction when it comes to smoky eye. I know I said I wanted a smoky eye, but we really brought the smoke on this smoky eye. Enough of me rambling. Let's go ahead and transition into the next look. We've moved on to our third and final look in this video and I am very excited. I think I'm gonna go all out for this one. I definitely wanna do something more creative than the other two looks. I think I'm gonna go for like a full on cut crease moment. I'm not really sure what I wanna do. I know I wanna play with these grays and possibly this red shimmer at the bottom because I haven't played with that one yet. So I'm thinking I wanna go something along the lines of the grays and reds. I'm trying to decide what type of look I wanna do because I, I'm going to be doing a fourth look with this over on my TikTok, which I will link in the description below if you're interested. But for now, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and dive right in. To prep my eyes for the look, I just went in with my P. Louise primer. This is in the shade Rumor One, which I believe is the fairest of them or the second fairest because there, there could be a Rumor Zero. So I just went in with this and then set it with a plain white matte shadow on top to give us a nice base to work with. The first shade I want to go into is this very light gray. It's like a Timberwolf gray and this is in the shade Tomb. So I'm going to go ahead and take that and we're going to diffuse that in the crease. Ignore my messy brushes. I do have to wash brushes but I did wipe this off in my color switch so there shouldn't be any residual pigment on the brush. So I am just going to do this on the top of my crease. I'm not going to bring it down in the inner corner at all because I think I want to do kind of like a full cut crease moment something like this just a very nice blown out light gray and next we're going to go into inferno which is the deeper gray and i'm going to take that on just a smaller blending brush and we're going to pop that in the crease right below where we pop tomb so this is still above my actual crease but underneath where we placed tomb and when I get to the end, I'm just kind of smoking it out towards the side because I want to do kind of like a swoopy cut crease. Once that gray is down, I'm just taking that first blending brush just to blend the two gray shades together. And next, I think I'm going to hop into this very dark navy shade. This is in the shade Poison. I was going to do the black, but I don't think we've tried Poison yet, so... We're just gonna go for it. And this one I'm also popping in the crease just below Inferno, which was that deeper gray. This one can come down onto the lid just a tiny bit because I am going to go through and do a cut crease, so it doesn't really matter if it's perfect. 
Now that I have the general crease shape down, I'm going to go ahead and just hop into a white matte liquid shadow. This is from Jeffree Star and it is in the shade Star Wedding. It can be any white liquid shadow. You could even use concealer for this. I'm just going to use a white because it just seems like the vibe. So I'm just scooping a little bit onto the back of my hand and then I'm going to go in with a concealer brush and we're just going to do a full cut crease moment. Right when I get to the end right here, I'm just kind of swooping it out, almost like a winged liner shape. This is really one of those trust the process moments because I promise it's gonna look a lot better than it does right now. After the white shadow, this is what we're looking like so far. I know it's still a little scary, but I promise we're gonna fix it. We're gonna do some liner, and I think I'm actually gonna go in with some shimmer on the lid. I wanted it to be just like an all white crease, but honestly, after thinking about it, I think I'm gonna go in with this blue shimmer and then maybe the yellow on the inner corner. I haven't quite figured out that far yet. We're just gonna go ahead and start with that blue shimmer Juliet, and I'm just taking this on literally half an ABH brush because my brush broke in half. I'm also gonna spray with just a touch of my Morphe setting spray. This shade I feel like is gonna be more of like a toppery shade, so I don't think it's gonna take away too much from the light crease. I'm just gonna take my time and build that blue up a little bit on the lid just to give it kind of a nice ethereal glow. I have noticed with the shimmers in this palette in particular, I feel like using my finger gives a better color payoff than using a brush. However, my nails are way too long to do that, and when I try to do that, I poked myself in the eye. So we're just gonna stick with building it up with a brush. Now that I've built up that blue a little bit, I'm gonna go in with some winged eyeliner. We're gonna go ahead and just do a big old wing. I am aware my wings are very slightly different shapes. In fact, maybe a little bit more than very slightly. Uh, I am aware they are different shapes. We're just gonna roll with it because I don't really wanna take the entire look off just to fix a winged eyeliner. So we're just gonna go with it. For my lower lash line, I actually think I'm gonna hop into the pink side and go into this deep burgundy quill. I'm just gonna start smoking that on the outer half of my lower lash line. I feel like we're going for like, what is it? The Capulets and the Montagues? Is that Romeo and Juliet names? Very polar opposite contrasty look we're going for. And for the inner portion of my lower lash line, I'm gonna go in with Love, which is just this very true red matte. I feel like it'll be very pretty and tie the look together. In case anyone was wondering what matte white I've been using, I'm going into the A1 shade in my Norvina. I think this is the volume five palette. I'm just gonna take a touch of that just to clean up my lower lash line. I feel like one of the perks of being so pale is I can use very light shades to do basic cleaning. The last thing I wanna do on this look is hop into Moors, which is this yellowy shifty shade. And I'm just gonna pop that on the inner corner. Here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and do lashes, lips, and finish up the look off camera. And then we'll meet together for my final thoughts and review of the palette. We are back and this is the final third look. I am very happy with how it turned out. I am a sucker for a blue eyeshadow and red lip combo. It just feels so vintage to me. And I feel like this look perfectly captures the love and death sides of Romeo and Juliet. It's serving Montague and Capulet realness. I love it. I think it's very cute. Can you tell I'm not going anywhere today though? It's like two degrees outside. I'm not leaving my house. I have pajama pants on. But overall, I'm very happy with how this third look turned out. I think it's really pretty and I'm glad that this gets to be the feature look of this video, both in the intro and the outro. I mean, I hope you guys liked all three looks, but I really like this one and I'm glad that it is getting featured in this little three looks video. Let's go ahead and dive into my thoughts on this palette. So this palette has 18 shades. I believe it retails for $47. You do have kind of that pinky red side and the dark grungy blue side. So you have that kind of contrast between, you know, like the Capulet and the Montagues or the Love and the Death. Like it has a lot of symbolism in it, which I really like. Overall, I thought it was a really good palette. If you've been anywhere near my channel, you know that I am a pretty big fan of Nomad's Formula. I love both their concepts because I myself am a travel lover, but I also really like their formulas. I feel like they always just throw it out of the park. This palette in particular is not my favorite out of the Nomad palettes. I feel like it's just really hard to top what they did last year with the 
Provence palette and then the Hudson Valley palette. The mattes themselves are very nice. It is that standard matte formula that I would expect from Nomad, the very buttery, blendable, pigmented mattes. It's the shimmers that kind of got me a little bit. That blue shimmer we used in today's look, I feel like is a little bit closer to their standard shimmer formula. However, as a whole, I feel like they've really played around with textures in these shimmers. And while they are beautiful, I just feel like it's a little bit impractical for me personally. I felt like they gave the best punch when applied with the fingers. However, I do have very long nails. These are my natural nails. And if I try and apply, I'm just gonna poke my eye out. So it was just a little bit inconvenient for me personally. I really did enjoy playing with the different textures though. I felt like it gave a lot of dimension to the different looks and it also just kind of amped up the playtime with my makeup. I'm always loving trying out new things and new formulas when it comes to my makeup. So this was no different. However, I did prefer more of their wet kind of like putty formula shimmers from last year's palettes. I literally just finished editing and put away my tripod setup and everything. Um, but I did have a quick update because I just checked Instagram and Nomad had actually just addressed the shimmer situation in the palettes. I thought it was just me. I thought I was just kind of like being picky, but it turns out that they did have a manufacturing error and some of the shimmers in the palettes did get pressed a little too hard. So I am going to reach out to them about getting a replacement because my shimmers were definitely not working for me as good as I would hope. So I will have to update you guys later on as to how I feel about the current shimmers or the updated shimmers, I should say. And for now, I hope you guys enjoyed the looks. Um, yeah, back to your video. Just a personal preference thing though. Overall, I did really enjoy this palette. I'm glad I have it in my collection. And like I said, I did do three looks in this video, but I am going to be doing an additional fourth look over on my TikTok. So I will link that in the description below if you are interested in checking that out. I really try when I'm doing review videos to not do just straight pink and red looks because that's what I like to wear every day. So I really like to kind of push myself outside of my comfort zone and do different color combinations and techniques. But now that I have the three looks video out of the way, I can go ahead and just indulge myself in pink and red looks. But that is all for today's video, friends. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, make sure you're subscribed so you never miss out on any of my future uploads. I hope you guys have a lovely day and I will see you guys all in the next one. Bye, friends.